Well, good morning, and we're recording, so it's wonderful. Good morning, and thank you, everyone, for, for coming. Our goal here today is to let you know about awesome services that we have available through the Academic Accommodation Center, which used to be called DSPS, or Disabled Students Programs and Services. So we've gone through a new name, new director. It's a new time on campus. And we wanted to share with students and please tell your friends and tell others about not only the, our program and the services that we provide, but the tools that you have available um, at your fingertips through your operating system through Canvas and tools that we have available through our office to loan you to help you through this unique time of on-campus learning. Okay, so I'm Dr. Terry Goldson, I'm the new director and Scott McAfee is the access coordinator. And uh, the DSPS, we haven't gotten around to changing it yet, at canyons.edu is the best way to get in touch with us. So let's go ahead, next slide, please. So what do we do? What, who are we? So we provide direct counseling and support for students with a range of disabilities. So students who have any kind of physical, mental health, or learning disability, doesn't matter what, doesn't, all that matters is that because of this disability or this disabling condition, that you have some barrier to your education. And that's what we're here to help with, is to help break down those barriers, whatever it might be. And we also assist faculty and students to provide accommodations to students with disabilities. And we advocate for students with disabilities on campus with their faculty, with the administrators. And we have to make sure part of our role is to make sure that the campus doesn't inadvertently uh, do something to discriminate against people with disabilities. The next slide, please. Again, so we serve any student with any visible or documented physical, mental health, or learning disability. Let me just talk for a second about the visible. So maybe um, you or a friend that could use services, maybe they're missing a limb, right? So that's visible. So we don't need documentation of that. If you need support for writing because you're missing an arm or you need um, priority registration so that you could get your classes at a certain time because you're missing a leg and on campus, it takes you time to get from here to there, things like that. So the visible, again, if you've got that visible, a scar that goes from here to here, something like that, that's fine. Otherwise, uh, we can, any kind of documentation from your doctor, we can give you a form for them to fill out. If you had an IEP or 504 plan in high school, that's fine, doesn't matter how old it is. Um, and if, even if you're just taking, if you're taking medication, for some type of um, a disability, we can accept a picture of that medication bottle and then we can look up and see what that medication is used for and use that as, as documentation for your file. So again, any disability that is, any, a bit, that is a barrier to any part of your education. And to let you know, we don't tell anybody. Our program is completely voluntary and it is completely confidential. We do not tell anybody unless you ask us to. And we are happy to talk to faculty or so forth if you ask us to. But if you don't ask us to, it's nobody's business but yours and ours, right? And so we don't share it unless you ask us to. We give you your accommodation letter that you can take to your faculty and share with them or not. And that's up to you. Next slide, please. Just real quick, I just like to show off who uses our services. And so Last school year, 1920, so these are the kinds of uh, disabilities that we have to report to the chancellor's office. And I just like to point out that if you look at the top five, learning disabled, uh, psychological or mental health disability, um, other disabilities such as arthritis or epilepsy, attention deficit disorder or hyperactivity disorder, um, autism, those are the highest percentages of students that we have involved in our program. And all of those are students with non-visible disabilities. So a lot of the students that we work with, the majority of the students that we work with are students with, that don't have visible disabilities. So people think of disabled students as for people who use wheelchairs. That's a very small percent. You can see down there mobility pair, only 0.59% of our student population, of our 1,300 students 
our students with mobility impairments. So again, a large part of our population are students that have invisible disabilities. And so if that's you, we are definitely a place to come to, to join us. Next slide, please. What are our services? So we provide counseling, much like general counseling. So all of the academic advising, what courses do I take? What do I want to major in? Do we add in that disability component? So you know, because you have a learning disability in math, what might be a good major to not go into, right? You don't want to, you want to play to your strengths, not to your weaknesses. So that's where our counselors can come in. They can help you figure out what accommodations might work in those classes for you. And accommodations like medicine, and they, you know how they say practicing medicine? Well, it's the same thing for accommodations. We can sit down and come up with our best recommendation and you can try it and say, oh, that didn't work. And that's fine. And we put our heads together and we come up with something else. So it's uh, that's sort of the process. It's not one size fits all. It's not one accommodation fits all classes. One of the best accommodations we have is priority registration. So students with disabilities get to register in that first day, first hour. So if you are on top of it, you can get every single class you want exactly how you want it. So that is the best thing that we have to offer for being part of our program. The other thing is what Scott's gonna to talk to you about is our alternative media and assistive computer technology. We've got these tools that are just amazing. A lot of students, um, not just students with vision impairments, use alternative media and what's that? You might've heard of books on tape. Well, we don't do the on tape anymore. That's passe, but we have these great computer programs that'll read your textbooks to you. So you let Scott know what textbooks you want and he will upload them into the magic cloud and you can just get onto this, he'll give you a code or a login for a website. You just go there and there it is. You can see the words that go across the screen. You can hear it as you read it. You can change the voice, you can change the speed. There's so much, and I'm not gonna go too much into that because that's Scott's gig, but just know that those are awesome tools that so many students can take advantage of, not just students that have vision loss that you, you would think of who use braille or audiobooks. Test taking accommodations. So for some students, maybe you need to read things two or three times to get it, right? Maybe you're easily distracted by the noises and the students in the, in the room as taking tests. So if that's you, we want you to we want you to be able to show the best you, right? So we want to put you into an environment where we reduce those distractions, where we give you that little extra time for those thought processes, for the coming up with the information so that you can, again, put the best you forward. So that's another one that a lot of students take advantage of. We have tutors. We have tutors through Academic Accommodation Center. And then also we can help hook you up with tutors through the TLC. So it depends on what your needs are. And then for students who have any kind of communication access needs, we can provide sign language interpreters or for somebody like, let's say we became deaf tomorrow, right? Putting a sign language interpreter in your class wouldn't really be that helpful because maybe you don't know that sign language that well or at all. So then what we would use is called real-time captioning. And what real-time captioning is, it's where it's for its stenographer's machine, like you see on all of those TV shows, right? And it's a court stenographer's machine that's linked to a laptop with special software so that everything that's said in the class as they type it comes up verbatim on the screen. So that way uh, students can read it. So this is very helpful for a lot of people that become um, deaf or hard of hearing later in life, um, especially our military veterans, hearing loss due to you know, using guns, being close to IEDs, all that kind of stuff. Just awesome resources. Next slide, please. So just really quickly, I wanted to let everybody know how to get started with us. So the easiest way is you go to the Canyons website, click on that little A to Z button in the corner. That's everybody's favorite tool, right? Find Disabled Students Programs and Services because we haven't officially changed it in the website yet. So that, that was our, our name last semester. So that's how you still find us. And then once you click on that Disabled Stud Students Programs and Services page, Right in the middle, there's like a white bar and on there it says application for services. You click on that and you can scroll down. You can download our application, our release of information and the disability verification form. So we definitely need the application and the release of information signed by you. 
But as far as disability verification, we don't need that form if you've got some documentation that you can send us, if you've got that IEP, if you've got that doctor's note. I know with my insurance, with Kaiser, I can go online and I can print out a page with my diagnoses. That's fine. That's all we need. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get into our program. So let's next slide, please. So once you've got that, you're going to want to email us the application, the release, and your verification to dsps at canyons.edu. We do have a fax number um, that on our website. You can fax it to us if that's easier. And then once we receive that, we schedule you an intake appointment with one of our counselors. And all of our appointments nowadays are conducted via Zoom, just like this. And um, you sign the paperwork and all of that. Once you get hooked up with our program, you only need to stop in again once a year to stay current with us. You can come see us as often as you want. We are here to help, right? So if you need to see us every week, we are here, but you only have to come see us once a year to keep current. And it's very, very simple. Um, I always tell students it's a better idea to have a file set up with our office and not need it than to not have a file set up and then in the middle of the semester, you've got problems. And then you come to us and go, oh, we need help. And then we have to stop and we have to backtrack to get that application, that release and that verification, right? And then do the intake before we can help you. So if you've already got that done, then it's there. It's, you know, it's like you're acing the hole, right? And so if you don't need it, that's great. That's fine. And then if you do need it, we're here and happy to help. Next slide, please. And remember that we are always here for you, right? So the big thing is you've got to let us know because we are not, we're not allowed to come chasing after you and go, go, hey, John Doe, you have a visible disability. So you have to come and apply for disabled students. No, we don't do that, right? It's a total voluntary program. That's why I'm here to say, here we are, here's what we do. Come to us, all you have to do, you don't even have to say, oh, I don't remember what to do. You just have to contact us and say, hey, how do I get into services, right? So we're there Monday through Thursday from nine to five, Friday from nine to noon, that dsps at canyons.edu is the best way to reach us or else you can leave a message at our phone number, which is the 362-3341. When we get back on campus, we have a beautiful location, huge, lots of study area. Um, in Seiko Hall, room 103, or in Canyon Country, we are available in Quad A by appointment. So hopefully that gives you just a general overview of who we are and what we do. And now I'm going to turn it over to Scott so that he can tell you about all of the really great fun stuff that you can have access to as a student who is registered with our program and some stuff you can access yourself at home without even registering with our program. So take it away, Scott. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goldstein. So hello, everybody. My name is Scott McAfee. I'm the Access Coordinator for College of the Canyons. And part of my job is to help you all uh, learn how to use some of the wonderful technology that we have in the Academic Accommodation Center, and also to uh, help find out what works, what, what tools that we have work best for you and your particular needs. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now going over some of the great tools that we offer at uh, College of the Canyons in our physical lab, which uh, hopefully we'll see really soon. Um, some of the tools you have available on your own computer right now, and some of the other tools that you can check out from College of the Canyons to use at home or in your class. So I'm gonna start off with one of our most popular tools, and that is the Live Scroll smart pen. Now I'm showing an image here of a pen and it's broken down into its various components. So I'm going to start at the very top and work my way down so you can see exactly what this pen does. And by the way, just because you can't tell because it's a picture, this is a regular sized pen, something you would just pick up and use laying around. But it has some special features that we can see right off the bat. And that's some sort of digital screen on top that looks kind of futuristic. So let's see what this has. Well, first it has an audio jack. And in fact, we have the newer model, which is Bluetooth. So you can connect your Bluetooth headphones and listen to the pen. And I'll tell you what it does in just a second. It also has a micro USB connector. Again, I think the newer ones might be wireless. I'm not sure. It has a microphone built into it, an OLED, an organic LED display 
built-in speakers. It has two to four gigs, we have four gig models as well, uh, of memory, an ergonomic grip, and finally the replaceable ink. So what does this technological marvel do? Well, this pen, when used in conjunction with our special smart paper, it will record the lecture that you are taking notes on and it'll digitize your handwriting and combine it with an audio file. So while you're looking at your printed notes that you've written on your computer screen, you could tap anywhere on your notes and it'll take you to that spot in the recorded lecture. So it's this combination of technologies that allows you to see the lecture, it allows you to hear the lecture, and it gives you total control over navigation. Now, the two gig model will hold up to 200 hours of audio. My goodness, hopefully you're not spending 200 hours in class uh, this semester. But if you are, there you go. Uh, we have a four gig model and that holds, well, I'm assuming 400 plus hours. So you'll, you won't have any problems with space on this device. It has a software suite that's all free that you install on your computer and you can edit things and delete audio files and all kinds of wonderful uh, things. So this is a very popular tool that we use here at College of the Canyons. And right now we check out our technology through the library. So if you're uh, joining our department or you are already part of our department and this is something that is on your accommodations letter, you'll go to the library to check it out. Let's take a look at some of the other tools that we have. This is my favorite. So I'm gonna build upon what Dr. Goldstein was saying. I'm actually prior service myself. So I wanted to add to what she was saying that um, uh, we'll never tell post commanders or anything like that. Uh, your privacy is your privacy when you join our department. And I also became disabled later in life as well. So she hit the nail on the head for a lot of us who are coming to COC as students who uh, were not born with disabilities. And now we are suddenly depending on technology to help us uh, achieve our academic goals. And so this is one of the devices that I personally use that a lot of students also enjoy using, and that's the HumanWare uh, Digital Enlargement Device, a very original name. So it's this portable device. It's hard to tell by just looking at this screenshot. I would have done a live demo for you, but we are all in quarantine right now. And uh, it basically looks like a little, uh, it's smaller than a briefcase, but I'm, it's basically a briefcase and you bring it to your class and you pull it out and you unfold it and it's this tablet here and it will enlarge any documents or handouts you have, which is a great feature. It has all kinds of uh, audio, text to audio features. But one of the more interesting features that you might be interested in is this camera device that attaches to the portable display. And now you can get a better view of the message board. Let's see, we have a chat, uh, something in the chat here. Let me see what's going on here. Um, oh, okay. So this device does it all. It will enlarge your handouts that you have in class. It'll read it aloud for you. You could take screenshots uh, and highlight it and convert it into digital text documents. And it also enlarges the uh, text on the whiteboard if you're in a classroom. Uh, even if we sit very close, some of us who have visual impairments still can't quite see what's going on. So this camera really helps. So I know it says LiveScribe on there, but it's not. This is the HumanWare uh, device. So another great tool, kind of giving you an idea of some of the things we offer here. Now, this read out loud or read aloud is something you can use right now for free in your own home on your computer. And what this does is it will le it'll read any text on the screen to you aloud. You can use this in Canvas, even while you're taking exams. Uh, you can use this while uh, reading your course textbook in Canvas, anything going on in, in Canvas. Um, you don't need anyone's permission to use this. This is a, a tool that's available to you right now. All you have to do is uh, go to Google and just go to the uh, Chrome web store. If you use Chrome, if you use Internet Explorer, you will go to the Internet Explorer store. All the tools are basically the same. And you'll look for read out loud. And here we see the tool. And it's real easy. If you're using Chrome, again, if you're using Internet Explorer or something else, it's basically the same process. And you just click add to Chrome and add extension. And by the way, feel free to pause this and take your time. 
And there we go. You will have Read Out Loud installed. It'll appear up there as this little icon uh, in your next to your navigation bar. And anytime you want something read, you just click on that. And you have many options, voices, how fast it reads, all of those kinds of things. And even though it's a little advanced and you don't really need these, some people like to have keyboard shortcuts. So I've provided them for you here. And of course you can customize them. For example, maybe you don't have the dexterity in your fingers to hit alt and period. And you can change it to whatever you want, uh, what's easiest and most convenient for you. So those are some of the tools that we have um, I'm going to talk about two more internet-based tools, but I also want to discuss our lab. Now, in the near future, we're all going to be able to come back to campus. And as Dr. Goldstein said, we have an amazing lab. Not only is there a lot of space for you to spread out and get some studying done and tutoring and all those wonderful things, but we also have 18, at least 18, computer lab stations one of them is a visually impaired station that I created because I use it too. And it's a gigantic monitor with Zoom text and JAWS and all kinds of assistive software. Um, we have uh, document readers and enlargers. Some of them are big, but they have a little, almost like a cell phone-like device that you can plop off and use remotely and mobily, all kinds of great tools. Uh, I mentioned we have Zoom Text and JAWS, and if you don't know what those are, um, Zoom Text is a screen enlargement software. It's very uh, um, diverse. And JAWS, which stands for Job Access with Sound, which is what many blind computer users will use to listen to the internet, navigate documents. Of course, just so you know, they combine the two and it's called Fusion now. We also have joystick mice. So that's uh, maybe you have a carpal tunnel or you have dexterity issues with your fingers and wrist. They have mice, uh, so computer mice, I should say, that are shaped like a joystick. So you can rest your hand on there and it's a lot easier. We also have breath and head movement mice. Uh, we have braille notes. And if you are blind or visually impaired, you probably know what that is. It's basically a braille based PDA. It's a braille computer with a little refreshable braille display. Neat stuff. Uh, Dragon naturally speaking software. This is software where if you speak into a microphone, it will convert that spoken word into a text document for you. You've actually used this technology probably every day and you don't even realize it. Have you ever given a text where you've spoken into your phone and said, hey mom, I'm going to be a little late for dinner. And then it turns into a text and you send it. It's kind of the same technology. And last but not least, your brailing needs. So if you are a braille user, uh, we have lots of e-text that I'm about to show you that uh, you can use. But if you uh, want to use braille, that is absolutely something we can provide for you. Uh, as you know, it takes a little while to produce braille. So the more notice, uh, the better, and we can get that sent off for you. I wanna show you two more tools that I think you're gonna find very interesting, but I'm gonna have to share my screen for that. So give me one second here. And I'm going to share let me find it here. There it is. All right. I would like to share our e-text service. And let me make sure no one's asking me any questions. Roxanne saying, thank, thank you for all the great information. Well, thank you, Roxanne, for attending. You're very welcome. Okay. I want to show you Kurzweil Firefly or Kurzweil Firefly. I've been using this for 15 or 20 years. I still don't know how to pronounce it. It's one of those. Kurzweil Firefly, we'll call it. And uh, Kurzweil Firefly is our online e-text service, but it does so much more than just read e-text aloud to you. Actually, folks, I'm gonna have to stop sharing real quick and share it one more time because I forgot to share my sound. So let's try that again. There we go, share sound. So now you can hear all the wonderful things. Okay, so here we have a textbook, Behavioral Neuroscience Made Accessible. And I'll show you the simple stuff first. So all I have to do is click in there and I'm gonna hit play behavioral and it should have played the word for you right but let's say i i don't want it to be that uh, i wanted to read the whole sentence or the whole paragraph so i could just select paragraph and let's go back over here and see what it does behavioral all right you should be hearing things no nope. are you hearing anything over there oh okay let's try this. new there and revised go. artwork and animations bring key concepts oh, to life okay. All and new in the going. news. 
and I can adjust the settings and I'll show you a few things here. Let's say I don't like Ryan, the US English speaker. Okay, I wanna hear what Tracy sounds like. Maybe, I, maybe it just sounds better on the ears. So I'm gonna select Tracy and let's go back over here and see what Tracy sounds like. Let's select a new, uh, a new paragraph here. New and updated applications demonstrate right. how no, brain no, discoveries no, no, no. can- Tracy's no good, okay. <laughs> well, uh, let's go back to uh, uh, Ryan and let's say, you know what? Ryan's reading a little slow for me. So I'm gonna speed him up a little bit. And let's see what it sounds like now. A. Whoops. All right. Well, it's going a little slow on my end. There. New learning objectives help okay. reader. So I'll just show you a few more features here. But this is the amazing e-tech system we can have. We have. You can adjust your reading speed, as I've shown you. There's tons of speakers. So if maybe one just appeals to you more than the other. You can have it read word for word, line by line sentence by sentence or the entire paragraph, which is what I usually have it set to and I just pause it when I need time to reflect. Um, all kinds of settings here and look what else it does. I'm gonna get out of these. You can highlight things. So I'm gonna go and um, highlight this. So here we go. This is very important to me, right? There we go. And I, now I can add a note. So let's find a note here, sticky notes. How about this? And we'll put a note here and I'll put very important. Let's see if I could type on exam okay and we can make that larger however we want to do this and we can go up there we go uh what else do we have here you could uh highlight a word the highlights i'm sorry you want does it extract the highlights um, yeah, it does all kinds of things. So if you go to the tools here, you could tell it to uh, spell check. And I do believe extracting the highlights is one of the things it does. It, th there's so many features that this tool has. So I, I wanted to show this to you all because Kurzweil Firefly is our e-text service. And if you are an audio learner and this is one of your accommodations, then this will be a great tool for you. But this goes beyond just listening to your text. Uh, we could zoom in as well. This is what I use. Let me show you where it is. How do we do that? Um, it's hidden in here. It's one of these. Oh, okay, well, I, oh wait, here it is. Uh, background, you could change the background color. I wanted to show you how you could fit it in. See if you, if you really uh, have a hard time seeing it like I do. You can zoom in and ah, much better. So that's one of the amazing e-text tools that we have. And anything else I wanted to show you here? Yes. One more thing that I think you'll find interesting that you can do right now if you're in a Canvas course at College of the Canyons. So I'm going to show you my Canvas course. You should all see my columns 105. Uh, are you all seeing that? Yes? Okay, great. So here you see my syllabus and it's in PDF format, but a lot of students uh, with disabilities have their own technology that they are used to using at home. And if that's you, then you might not like PDF. It might not work very well with your particular technology. If that's the case, check out what you could do over here. It's very hard to see, but if you move your mouse over, there's a little arrow just to the right of the file. And if we click on that, it'll give us some options. We see preview, download, which you can download if you're fine with PDF. But here's what I wanted to show you, alternative formats. So if we click on that, uh, hopefully you're seeing this, uh, you should see HTML, EPUB, electronic Braille files for my Braille users. You can even convert it to audio uh, files so you can hear it. So um, we are working to make uh, not Zoom, we're in Zoom right now, to make Canvas more and more accessible. We're investigating other plugins um, like text-to-speech, kind of what I showed you earlier with that Chrome plugin, but now this will be implemented into um, Canvas. So as a department, the Academic Accommodation Center is always looking for great tools, electronic or otherwise, to help you succeed in your academic goals. And if I've shown you something today that you're just blown away by, or you're just interested and you think that this will help you out, then come see us. We have so many more tools that I can't even get into uh, today that will absolutely help you. So uh, let's bring it all home and let me review and summarize. Uh, today, I've had the opportunity to show you some of the amazing tools that we offer here at the Accommodation, Academic Accommodation Center, uh, including the LiveScribe pen, which records all your lectures, digitizes your notes, and combines it with the audio file, so you have both, both a visual and an audio component. Uh, I've shown you the Humanware document enlarger, 
which is this great portable device that will enlarge documents, handouts, among other things. It also highlights and all those kinds of things, but it also has a camera that will enlarge the whiteboard if you're in a classroom or whatever it is that you're looking at. What else did I show you? I showed you Kurzweil Firefly, which is our major e-text service. We have other e-text services as well, but that's the main one that we use. Um, and I've shown you uh, browser plugins for text-to-speech that you can install today. Uh, and <laughs> I just showed you some alternative format options for uh, the Canvas. There's one other thing I want to show you before I leave. So I, I am not a Mac user. I am a, uh, a Windows user. Oh, uh, and Sandy is saying in the chat, these resources are great. It will definitely assist the students that qualify. Yeah, thanks, Sandy. And uh, hopefully this does help. So um, I am a Windows user. I have heard that the functionality I'm about to show you in Windows for uh, access, for accessibility, is pretty much the same in uh, a Mac environment and that Mac has a very good reputation for being accessible. So I apologize to my Mac users. I only have some Windows tips for you today, but I would like to uh, stop sharing this and let me open up my Windows accessibility features. Again, something you can do right now. So let's open up, I think this is it. Let's go to share. There it is. Okay, so in Windows, there is something called um, ease of access. And all you have to do is uh, hit the Windows key and search for ease of access. It'll bring up this menu. And it has all these great built-in tools. So let's start off with the on-screen keyboard. If I slip, uh, click that to on, I don't know if you're able to see it when I'm sharing, but on my end, this big virtual keyboard has come up. So now maybe I have limited dexterity in my hands or movement in my arms. Uh, now what I can do is I can use a head mouse and I could peck away at the keyboard that's on the screen or I can uh, use voice commands and uh, activate the uh, keyboard that way. So uh, let me get rid of the keyboard now and show you some of the other things that this does. Um, we can make the text larger. We can make everything bigger. You'll you see mine's already set at 150%. Uh, what else can we do? There's a magnifier here. Look at this, turn on the magnifier. Whoa, I can go even uh, further in or I can go further back. This is all stuff that's available, absolutely free, right at your fingertips. A lot of the technology we have does the same thing. It might do it a little differently, maybe a little better, but what you have right at your fingertips can help you today uh, until you get a chance to see us and we can provide you with some of these more uh, amazing technologies. Let's see what else they have. Color filters. I don't have it set up on this laptop, but I use this on my uh, other computer. You can uh, invert the colors. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I can see everything now, uh, but we'll go back to uh, grayscale and, okay. Yeah, it okay. doesn't show up. Like, oh, it doesn't show but, up on your end. Oh, okay. But the inverted is, so for a lot of people reading, um, Black background and white text is much easier on the eyes because actually how our textbooks are, white pages with black text, that's the hardest on your eyes. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, and that's exactly what it did. And it might look a little psychedelic <laughs> if you've never seen it before, but it is very easy on the eyes. So again, and there's narrator, which does some has some reading features. There's all kinds of things. So I'm going to close out of here and... Uh, there we go. Okay, so I would like to encourage you to um, take advantage of the tools that are available to you right now, whether you're in a Windows environment or a Mac environment. Um, you can find all kinds of great plugins as well for Chrome or Internet Explorer, or I think Safari is on the Mac, whatever it is you have. Uh, all of these tools are available for you and uh, I want to make sure that you have access to them today so you can get started today uh, accessing your content. And then, of course, come to our department, the Academic Accommodation Center, join up with our department, and then we can help you fine tune your tool selection process and see what we have to offer you as well. So I hope you enjoyed my brief presentation here, and uh, I absolutely look forward to meeting with you and working with you and seeing how we can help you. 
And I think that's all I have to say, uh, Dr. Goldstein. So now we're going to open it up if anybody has any questions, because we've gone through a lot of information very quickly. And I think the bottom line is you've got tools available for, for you right now at your fingertips. And we are here and ready and happy to help you use them as well as additional tools that we can supply through our department. So what's on your mind? Go ahead and ask away. Yeah, I, I just, it's fantastic, Scott. It's really nice to like meet you more or less face to face. <laughs> hey, Larry. <laughs> I, I had no idea this stuff was going on. Thank you for inviting me t today, Terry. Uh, just, like, whoa, <laughs> I'd have done better in school if I had this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I was wondering if you could maybe visit our our Autism Social Alliance group and kind of show so, show them some of this stuff. I, yes. I don't, you know, they, they're amazing what they can do. They're all artists and they make animation movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this might be uh, something that they could, they don't even know that they've got. So um, so maybe have you visit, but um, as you know, you know, we have a lot of students in the, come to the health center that can benefit from this stuff too. We had no, I, I, we were looking at each other the other day going, what? <laughs> wow, so this is really great, thank you. Well, we appreciate you coming and joining us because that's that, that's what the point of this is, is to get the word out. And this is going to be uh, transcribed and we will be posting this video on our website as well. So that other students can come that weren't able to attend today and, and you know, take advantage. There's so much, so many tools. And as I was talking uh, with Larry and his team yesterday, they're not even though they are originally tools that were created for people with disabilities, universal design just means that there's so many more people who can take advantage. I, uh, I like to listen. I love to have the audio on while I'm reading because it just helps me to get it faster. My brain doesn't wander so much when I'm listening to it while I'm reading it. I just get it a lot faster. I don't have to read and reread and reread. Um, as Scott mentioned, a lot of the technology that we were showing you exists on your phone. It was originally developed for people with disabilities, but now everybody's using it. Universal design, uh, the dragon naturally speaking, a lot of lawyers use it because now they have legal um, add-ons or medical add-ons so that it learns the lingo faster. And so doctors and lawyers, they don't, they don't have those, you know, talking into a dictaphone and having someone typing away anymore. They just talk into their computer and the computer types away for them. So we have that available for you. Some students are amazing speakers. And the minute they put pen to paper, the brain goes whoop, like they can't get it out. And so if we give them um, the opportunity to just get it out on, on Dragon, then you can go back in and fine tune it as opposed to trying to write it from scratch. There's just so many different ways of using this, this technologies. You know, we've always thought about things like um, physical access, right? Is, are there, is there a ramp where there are stairs? Is, are the doors wide enough, right? So now we're pretty good with that. So now we need to work on our digital access, especially as we move further and further into a digital age and, and in this COVID environment away from uh, being on campus. So it's very important that everybody knows about these tools, not just students who register for the program. As I was talking yesterday also, like captions, deaf, people who are deaf and hard of hearing are number four users of captions. They're not one through three. Those are hearing people that are in bars and restaurants and gyms and a husband and wife where one wants to watch TV and the other one wants to go to bed. You know, those situations. Then deaf people are down here, they're number four, even though the captions were put in place for them, but other people are getting benefit from it. So there's just so much benefit from this technology, whether or not you identify as a person who has a disability or any sort of a barrier to your education. But it, we are here and it's very easy to, to get signed up with us. If you are um, not sure that you have any documentation, still come talk to us and we can have a chat about what your concerns, what are the issues, and how we might go about 
approaching getting you on boarded with our program or hooked up with other campus programs because we're all part of Team COC. Any other questions? Yeah, I actually have two. One is okay. hopefully a simple question. It's for Scott. Um, would you say for our students um, that want to use the technology, the accessibility technology, would you recommend that they get a Mac or would you recommend that they get a Windows or does it, is it pretty equal? Like, is it pretty good on both sides? Because I think as our students are considering maybe their next computer and they want to access these, what, what do you say? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. So I'll say it right off the bat, I'm biased towards Windows because I am a Windows user and an Android user. Um, however, I will say that the Mac has for a long time had a very good reputation in the accessibility community for right off the bat being released with accessible features. But what I would recommend is that if you are a student considering what do I buy? Do I buy a Windows laptop or a Mac laptop, which is going to be easier for me in terms of accessibility? You should test both of them out first. See which one works, works easiest for you, because you might find that even though the Mac, let's say, has this great tool that you've heard about, it might not work best for you. And you might find that the Windows tool, the equivalent, for whatever reason, works better for you. So before you commit, play around with both and get a sense for what works with you. Uh, and that will be the better determination than the list of tools that it offers. Because a list of tools and tools themselves don't do you any good if they don't work well with your style or um, your abilities. So I, you. hopefully that helps. Yeah, so do both, um, are they both available to test out in your labs? Boy, that's a good question. I. Um, you know, we don't have any Macs in our labs, but yeah. that that yet, I was going to say that that could be something that uh, we need to look into. Cool. On the and list, I, putting it on the list as yes. we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Adding more to your list of that's probably already long already. No problem. Uh, my second question is, um, so during my grad school experience, I've actually done a, a qualitative research paper on students with unseen disabilities, and most of mm -hmm. them had chronic illnesses. Um, and they were saying it was so hard getting accommodations because they look healthy um, or, you know, um, it's, um, they have chronic illnesses where there is not necessarily a cure or a medication, but they really need accommodations because um, like, you know, the spoon theory, right? Dr. Goldstein, have you heard of the spoon theory? It's um, when a lot of people that have like fibromyalgia or lupus or just um, these uh, chronic illnesses that just really drain their energy. Mm -hmm. um, they have like 10 spoons for a day, right? And then getting dressed is like one spoon. So they oh, have got it. And then if they go out with their friends for a couple hours, they're spending three spoons and then all of a sudden they're out of spoons. So they were telling me, yeah, like sometimes I, I have to go to class because it's mandatory, um, but I'm out of spoons for the day, you know, and I don't know what to do. And the accommodation center um, says that, you know, my disability is, not valid, which is obviously an unfortunate thing to hear. So we um, don't, that's not true, mm -hmm. right? Because I showed you on the list. Yeah. And most of the people have invisible disabilities. Um, if they've got verification of fibromyalgia or lupus or any of that, that's, those are valid disabilities. Those are those, and, and it is a barrier in any way, shape and form to their education. That's all that we need. Okay. I Great. toss in there too that uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm someone who acquired a disability later in life. And um, I didn't know, I didn't even know I needed services. I was also in graduate school uh, when all this started happening to me. And uh, I actually did my graduate thesis on um, people with disabilities using virtual environments to achieve real world results. So uh, I, I absolutely uh, sympathize with what you were saying. But as I mentioned earlier, um, absolutely come down and see us if you're, I know what it's like to have an invisible disability, you know, uh, and it, it can be very challenging, especially if this is new to you, you know, uh, if you've acquired this later in life. So that's another reason I think to come down to see us and once we are back on campus and visit our lab, there's all kinds of other students in the same situation as you are and this dealing with the same things more or less. Um, and we are, we are a community of uh, students and staff in this 
area of, of disability technology and assistance. So um, if, if you are in that situation, come down and see us, hang out in our lab and uh, you know, commiserate with your fellow students. That's why I kept the slide um, that shows that most of the people, that the largest percentage of people that we work with have invisible disabilities because it's true. A lot of faculty will look at a student and say, oh, you don't need extra time. You're, you're doing great. You're doing fine. You don't need it. But it's not up to that faculty. It's up to that student. And so um, part of my goal is to inform students and faculty that most of the students that we work with, you're not going to see a visible disability. You're not going to see what those barriers are. And so that's that. So we're just trying to get that word out that that's that's the way it is for most of the people. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that you had another chance to say it because I, I it wasn't at this school, obviously, that those experiences uh -huh. that I was sharing, but I wanted you to say it one more time for our students, you know, that maybe even feel that their disability is not a big deal. Um, I think a lot of our students might even feel like a little bit of like, well, like, does mine really count? You know, mm -hmm. I think just wanting to encourage them, like, if there is a barrier, you know, approach the Academic Accommodation Center so that you can see what can help you and thrive more and succeed more. So that was my goal with that question. That's cool. And as I always say, it's better to have a file with us and not need it than to not have it and then find that you need it. Do you want to add something, Larry? I, I just, it's a great point, Lynn, because there's a lot of students that feel, you know, you're going to reject them. You're going to say, mm -hmm. oh, you're not, now you're not really disabled, or you're going to run them through a mill, um, you know, and make them prove something, you know, and that's enough barrier for them to go, you know, I don't know, somebody over there is just going to say, I'm not, I'm not, I don't qualify, or I don't believe you, or it's not like, you know, like, like they get with SSI and stuff, you know, the, you, you, you try to get SSI and you just run through this huge ringer. Right. Um, and, and then reject it and then appeal and reject it again. That's and not us. Those sorts of things. And if you get the word out that, hey, you know, we're open to, the, you know, all these things. And, and really, we welcome you to come and, and check us out and um, for things that are invisible, like what Lynn was talking about. Um, I think that's a really that's a really great message to get out. And that you can have two people with the same diagnosis. One person considers themselves to be a person with a disability that that there is something disabling about that, and the other person doesn't even cross their mind. Mm -hmm. Same diagnosis, yep. mm -hmm. different people, and so it's a very individual decision. And I am not going to tell you that you're disability is not a barrier. It's up to you to tell me that these are my issues and my concerns and what can we do? So it's, to me, it's always a matter of bringing people in more than keeping people out. That's so that's key. why I was really happy when the Title V regulations got changed to make it so much easier to get people into our department. And we have a wonderful relationship with the health center and, um, people there who can who can help guide students if they don't have documentation or either getting it on campus or someplace possibly off campus to get it. But we've got a lot of resources. And, it, and as I said, it's a very individual thing. We're, all, we're here to help get people in rather than keep them out. The other, the other message I hear a lot from veterans, is they'll sit there and they'll tell me about how they, you know, carry the 200 pound ruck up and down the hills in Afghanistan and now they've got the knees of a 60 year old and they're 20 year old and then they and you tell, say oh well you should sign up for our services and they say no because somebody else needs it more but it doesn't work that way it's not a system of if you get it then somebody else is going to have to go without it doesn't work that way if you need it you get it and they get what they need so it's not, we're not, it's not an either or. We want to make sure that people know that as well. That's a great message. And, uh, you know, reminds me of what we talked about a little bit yesterday with connecting with veteran services, because they're, they're, they're like that a lot. Well, you yes. know, I'm bad enough or. My How many times you get your bell rung? Oh, only three times. Yeah. You know, well, that means they work. Years or my legs are, you know, it's good enough. And, and, and that's what you hear too. Well, there's people worse off, you know, and that sort of stuff. 
And um, that's not really, um, we really want them to switch that around and go say, you know, Title V has really changed. We're really there, for, you know, something like that, whatever works. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Yes. All right, well, we're getting close to the end of our time. Um, any final thoughts, any final questions? Yeah, I expect everybody that is on the video today um, to take this message and share it with more people because then you share it and they share it and they share it. And that's how we get to have an inclusive community. Just want to thank you so much for your time today. Yes, thank you. And for providing so much information. Um, and I hope that you know, our students here that were here today, um, listening and um, the ones that tune into the recording um, really just see that, you know, that you're here to help. So um, only more success to come towards all of our students. Yes, okay. it is all about student success. That is the bottom line of why we are all here. Thank you.